you may have already seen the release of Tailwind V4 Alpha and some of the features that come with that. Today, what I want to go over, though, is why I'm personally excited for this and what this means for UI libraries like mine or Shadcn, where we previously had to install some stuff into your Tailwind config and how that's going to become so much easier and the other benefits that this is going to have as well. To get started, though, I'm just going to point out that blog post here. So they have that Tailwind CSS V4 Alpha where Adam's written up sort of the progress they're making on Tailwind V4 and some of the features coming. A lot of it is there's a load of performance benefits. They've rewritten this stuff in Rust as well, which always comes with performance benefits. They've got rid of the bundle size a bit. They've reduced that and just a load of various other performance enhancing things. And another really cool one that I want to point out is container queries. So if you've previously styled stuff in Tailwind using breakpoints like large and stuff, where it's based on the screen container queries, you can actually make it so it's based on sort of a different element. So the size of the element itself based on those container queries. Previously, you needed a Tailwind plugin to do this. They're adding that straight in to Tailwind v4. And the other thing is just sort of syntax change for these composable variants here. But the bit I want to get into is why I'm personally excited, and that is around the theming. So everything in Tailwind now, instead of being done via a config, is done via a theme in CSS variables. So we have our breakpoints here that are defined as a CSS variable. You have that default colors here that are all defined as a CSS variable. And the benefit of this is the way that we override these in our configuration, where previously you needed that tailwind.config.ts. You can actually get rid of that config file entirely now in v4. So if I go to something like Jolly UI, which is my personal UI library that I make, which essentially is making React Area components compatible with Shad CN UI and just keeping the styling consistent, but allowing you to, you to use React Area instead of Radix. And the massive benefit of this is if I go into the installation here, what you'll see is I've previously had to make you copy this quite large Tailwind config file to set up all of the colors and different border radiuses that you'll need to have it sort of aligned with these styles. And then also copy this globals.css with these colors in it. And a lot of people take issue with these colors as well because they're HSL colors. And the problem with that is you have to define them in Tailwind V3 like this so that you can use the alpha channel so you can get those opacity modifiers. That's also been gone away with in Tailwind V4. So if I show you what I mean, this is currently running Tailwind V3 here. So as I said, we've got that global CSS and it's hard to tell what these colors are. With what the extension I'm running, it should highlight the colors, but because this isn't wrapped in a HSL function, you can't see it. And then we go to our Tailwind config and you've got a load of different things where here we wrap it and then say, use this variable. Now in Tailwind v4, we're going to get rid of all of that. So if I switch to Tailwind v4, you'll see that the Tailwind config has actually been deleted so we can get rid of that file. And all we've done to set up our theme is import Tailwind up here. And then we've set at theme and we can do color black background. And then you'll see here that it does actually have a color here, just my color picker or my color extension in VS Code is making that black on black. And then here you'll see that we have our color foreground and we can wrap it in that function again so we can see that color. And I'm really hoping this works way all the way through to Tailwind IntelliSense as well, where if we have background background here, it will have that little color display there because it's a really nice way to sort of just landmark different elements on a page. So you can quickly scroll down to them. If you had a red button on a page that had a bug in it, you can very quickly scroll down and navigate where you are based on that. So I'm hoping that comes back with Tailwind V4. But as you'll see here, it's just a way easier way of getting you set up to install a UI library like ShadCN or mine, pretty much all you would have to do is just add this into your CSS file. And the other massive benefit as well is because everything's a CSS variable, it's going to work way better with other utilities. So previously in Frame Emotion to use Tailwind sort of numbers or Tailwind variables, what you'd have to do would use a resolve config. So if you wanted to pull anything from the Tailwind theme, you'd have to do a resolve config file and then essentially import some stuff from Tailwind to be able to get what that actual number was or what that value was for your CSS. Now all you need to do is literally just refer to the CSS variable and you have it there and ready to use. So this is a really cool system for just essentially overriding and using pure CSS so that we can get our custom colors in and stuff like that. And that's why I'm personally excited for it with a library like mine. You no longer need that Tailwind config. You no longer need anything that's not sort of pure CSS. And then in post CSS, all you have to do now is it's one. They don't need auto pre prefixer anymore. They've gotten rid of that. And you just use Tailwind post CSS. So as I said, it's just really cool. And I think that's a great feature of Tailwind. And I'm really excited for the way Tailwind V4 is going. You can actually try out the alpha now by just installing the alpha package. And it does say so in that blog as well. So if we go back to that blog, but a couple of things you should be aware of as well is they don't have support for everything yet. 
So if we scroll down, firstly, you'll see that frame of motion example is you can now just, if you wanted to import the tail in spacing, just use the CSS variable. And then they've got rid of a few utilities here that they mentioned and they've changed some of their defaults. But the other thing as well is they have this roadmap to v4, so they're not fully backwards compatible yet. They don't actually support the Tailwind config file at all, so it's not backwards compatible at all with that file. And then there's a few various other things that they don't have support for yet. They don't have support for that important configuration and some various other things. So as I said, this is an alpha, so get ready for it. But that's going to be really cool, as I said, for someone like me who runs something like Jolly UI and for Shad CN UI as well, and just anyone who sort of wants to overwrite variables and have it more compatible with various other things, as I showed you there with IntelliSense, Frame Motion, and various other things. Highly recommend you check out Jolly UI if you're looking for a UI library built on React Area components. That is all I have time for to update you on Tailwind. Thank you very much for watching, and please subscribe for more.